So, if you saw the last video, then you'll know that this is my new to me Honda S2000 AP1. And well, I've never actually driven one. I didn't even drive it before I bought it, which is a big no-no, but it felt okay from the passenger seat, and I kind of wanted to make a video catching my genuine reaction driving one for the first time, because, well, it's a bit of content for you guys, isn't it? So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Yeah, I've had to drive it back home, but this is the first time I've got it up to temperature and put the hammer down, so let's see what all of the fuss is about. It's going to be a good one, so grab yourself a cuppa, get sat down, and let's get into it. Now over the last 23 years, the Honda S2000 has solidified its position as a motoring classic. They stopped making them 13 years ago, yet people like me still want to go out and buy one over a more modern sports car, but why is that? Well for me, to put it simply, it's the back to basics approach that makes it so appealing. None of this namby pamby traction or stability control, you just have to learn how to feather that accelerator with your little toe, otherwise you'll end up being spat out into a bush. I haven't really experienced that before, every machine that I've owned, apart from the Acti, has always had a couple of driving aids helping me out when I've run out of skill. So it's definitely going to be an eye-opening experience driving around in something that is totally unforgiving if I take it a step too far, and you know, hopefully in the meantime I don't wrap it around a tree. Anyway, I kinda threw myself in at the deep end because, like I said already, I didn't actually drive this car prior to me picking it up, so this is genuinely the first proper run out that I've had in it. And yeah. I thought I'd take you along for the ride because, well, why not? So, here we go. In a bit. So, is this on? I think so. Hopefully, anyway, I don't know if you've ever tried to uh, to film inside of a convertible before, but it's an absolute nightmare without a microphone, so hence why I've got that. I drove 10 minutes home yesterday, so next morning, first drive out in this, says, let's see what it's all about. Went to the petrol station yesterday, so we've got some fuel, and we're on. So, I've got about five or six miles to get to the roads where I want to be on, so I'm just going to take it steady until we get up there. I'll turn the other GoPro on, and we'll have some fun. It's a little bit damp today, so it's a little bit sketchy, but the tyres look okay. I've got Yokohama Advanced Sports on. Never really had them before. Usually have Michelin's on, but we'll see what they're like. First impressions, I mean, technically not first impressions because I drove it last night, but the seating position is amazing. Like you're not you're not lying down by any means, but you, you are so low down. It feels like you're in essentially the lotus seating position, but you don't have the awkwardness of clambering over the sills to get in and out. It's not like tailor made for me, like the Anyone larger would probably feel uncomfortable in this car, I'd say. I mean, you could you could certainly be taller, but any wider and you, you're going to be struggling to fit in here, it's, it is properly tight. The shift is amazing. The throw on it, there's, you're throwing it like two or three inches. It's class. The noise is a bit of a bummer, but you're in a rag top. Nothing you can do about that. But I suppose this is the real test if... Uh, if we get over these hellish fucking speed bumps without touching the size of these. So do we sound? Get in. Right, so we're nearly up to where we go for a bit of a blast, generally with the other boys, but by myself today. And uh, so far, everything is super tight. The, um, the gear changes again so smooth such a short shift like I'm just I'm in fifth sixth it's just there's no throw in there at all and even in fifth it's sort of pulling a little bit which I didn't expect at all I thought it was going to have next to no torque because well Hondas don't really tend to have any but we'll test that out in a second once we get around here You 
you won't be able to see because I haven't got a GoPro facing at the uh, rev counter, but that was 8,500 RPM. Cattle grid. Stay on GoPros. Yeah, just about. down a little bit so you can hear me it is properly loud in here I can hear a little bit of a noise from the back I don't know what that is um, it's almost like a whistling noise but it could be sort of like metal on metal so it might be like a brake binding or something like that I'll have to get out and just check it out make sure it's not getting too hot if it is that I know they've got a small sort of spoiler on the on the on the boot lid and it sounds as if sort of air's getting through there and whistling a little bit I don't know if this will this will pick it up at all. But yeah, wow. Even though I love going to drive on these roads, you'll probably see if I switch to the other GoPro here, you can see why. It is very, very bumpy. For, oh, what's happened there? BM with its indicators on. Wow. It looks though that it's going to pour down, so I might turn around here and go back the other way. In fact, that is what I'll do. Right, let's give this another go. Wheel spin. I feel like DMO. Fucking hell. You look like him and all that. Hey, little GTI. Oh, you fucker. Brakes aren't fantastic, so just have to take it steady take a look at them. They might be a bit low, but I've just got a feeling that they're going to be shit pads. Yeah, it's so bumpy. <laughs> Decent set of coilovers would fix that, I'd imagine. It's just so tight. There's, it's a car that's done 108,000 miles and it, there's no slop at all in the steering. The chassis is so stiff. It's incredible. Like, the You'd expect to have some sort of give, but you've got nothing. And then when you're not kicking its head in, it's super quiet. Like, I'm not having a shout now. When you've got it up above, like, seven grand, I don't even know if you can hear me on this microphone. Probably a good job if you can't, to be honest. Great, I'm stuck behind someone now. On a single lane track. But apart from that little whistle that I could hear at the back, it doesn't appear to be anything sort of showing its face, telling me that there's anything wrong. It's not pulling either side, it's breaking in a straight line. So I probably won't be at a sticky caliper or something like that. It's such a nice place to live around here, man. Oh, whoa, you bastard. Got me out. Now this road does bottom out at some point, so I'll have to take it steady. There she is! Whoa, fuck. Might have to pull over here just so I can show you where I'm driving, because this is unreal. There we go then. I am really, really impressed if you couldn't tell. The chassis is an absolute masterpiece, and it's crazy to think how much more rigid it could have been if they decided to make the car a coupe from factory, because having a frame that stiff underneath you in a rag top is, well, mind-blowing. I definitely want to upgrade the tyres, but there are plenty of other bits that need attention too, so I'm sure I'll get around to it at some point. The discs and pads need refreshing too, so I might as well do it all in one go. If you've got any suggestions for what I should do to the car, then drop them down in the comments. I'm an open book with this one. As soon as it's mechanically perfect, I'm going to start tinkering with it, so link me to any parts that you think I might be interested in down below. That's it for now, though. Remember to do all the usual stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Apparently, that's the best way to support a little channel like mine, and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.